Here is our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Inside. I'm Tian Wei in Beijing. We begin today's program with border skirmishes between China and India. The Chinese Ministry of National Defense maintains China has sovereignty over the Galvan Valley area. A defense ministry spokesperson said on Wednesday responsibility for the recent border clash was utterly on the Indian side, and China had always sought to safeguard peace and stability at the border. What does this incident mean for China-India ties? In the long run, we invited guests for an in-depth discussion from both sides. How mature are our relations between China and India? For answers, I'm joined by three panelists. Hu Shisheng, Director of the Institute of South Asian Studies of the China Institutes of Contemporary International Relations. In Beijing also, Ye Hailin, Director of the Center for South Asia Studies with Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Meanwhile, we're also glad to be joined in New Delhi, India. Sri Kondapali, who is a professor at the Center for East Asian Studies of Jawaharlal Nehru University. Welcome to the three of you. Let me start by asking our Indian guest, Professor Kanapali, tell me more about how India is reacting to Chinese uh, State Councilor Foreign Minister Wang's suggestion that two sides need to work together to look at the border issue and also to jointly maintain peace and tranquility in the border areas. That's a quote coming from the Chinese Foreign Minister. Professor. Uh, I think it is a constructive suggestion, uh, and uh, in the meanwhile, there has been a uh, consultative mechanism that has been in place. Uh, on June 6th, the local level commanders have met and uh, decided about the process of disengagement and de-escalation uh, in the western sector of the border. Uh, secondly, there is also the diplomatic process. Uh, as you mentioned, the Foreign Minister Wang Yi and uh, Dr. Jai Shankar, the Indian Foreign Minister, they have met and they have, at the bottom line of this discussion, was to uh, be responsible for the uh, situation in the border areas. Mm -hmm. uh, they have identified, uh, and on June 22nd, once again, there was a meeting of the commanders, military commanders, and they formulated a policy of disengagement and de-escalation. So hopefully, they will have some progress on this issue. Hopefully. How big is that hope, Mr. Ye? Uh, so we know there is no official border between China and India yet, but there is an LAC, manufacturing control. So different sides have a different understanding. It's that's natural and that's the reality. But, uh, we hope that both sides can take some uh, measures uh, to soften the situation. Okay. And uh, through the statement made by the two ministers, we already feel there is some atmosphere and positive atmosphere around this issue. So I think the hope at least is 50, more than 50, I think. 50%. More than 50 percent. Well, what's your yeah. opinion, Mr. Hu, from China? Well, of course, that ensures that the top leaders from the two governments pay much attention to the coming down or cooling down of the tension because the bilateral relations is too important. Especially at this juncture, the two governments need more cooperation in addressing so many non-traditional securities. But more important to me is that the implementation of any kinds of consensus and agreements on the ground. We know that the clashes, but before the clashes, we know there is a corps commander level uh, talks and uh, at least four points of agreement. But finally, because the local officers violate the, 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 con the consensus, so mm. the clash followed. So the implementation, I think at this juncture, mostly important, especially at the LAC around the area. Mr. Ye gave a percentage. He thought at least more than 50 percent likely there's going to be a very positive result. Mr. Hu, if you want to give a number. No, 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 hope for what? I don't think, I don't believe there will be a second China-Indian border war. But hope for what? If it is a war, okay, 100% there will be no war. Uh, if for another clashes, like this scale, 
um, I think more or less there also be no another uh, physical bloody clashes, but clashes will be there, face off will be there, stand off will be there. I, I call it it is a kind of new normal because the LSC have different understandings by, mm. by, by each side. So there's still uh, more efforts awaiting that to strengthen the control step by step along the LSC. So if there is control efforts from each side, this kind of standoffs, face-offs, even some kind of clashes will still happen. Will still happen. So Mr. Hu, you and Mr. Ye both have talked about the different understandings of the current line uh, between the two countries. What exactly is China's understanding? Can you put it into words? The international community has a difficulty to understand exactly what is the nature of this recent conflict between China and India. What are these different understandings? No, we can understand that uh, uh, normally the, between the two countries there will be official border. The border will be recognized by the two governments and by the international community. But between China and India, there's no such kind of the official border, still border dispute for decades. China and the Indians had a different, a very unique case that so we only between China and the India. There's a LAC, means the line of actual control. Actual control means the every, uh, each side has their understanding on where is the so-called the border of their territory and mm. as their claim, but not necessarily recognized by another side. And there is no official line between the two countries. So there is always some face of a crush. But luckily, the two countries have the uh, very mature mechanism to maintain the situation through the discussion, negotiation, dialogue. So we see the ROEC is not an official border, of course. Okay. Uh, when China and the Indian reached the agreement on the border, it takes a very, very long time and a lot of tasks. But the ROEC is there. and. Uh, most of the parts of the this, uh, dispute areas, the roughly uh, RAC, where is the roughly the, the, situ uh, the location? It's still the two countries has the roughly understanding of the common sense. Okay, LAC, the line of actual control. So exactly what is the Indian version, <coughs> Professor Kandapali? that has brought the two countries to the skirmishes, if I could use that word, recently? Well, um, there have been a number of uh, border talks between Chinese yes. government and the Indian government officials. In 1960, there was a proposal from the Chinese side on the longitude, latitude uh, of its version of the border. Uh, and uh, for some reason, this has not been accepted. And then in 1981, we began eight talks till 1987 uh, at the very lower level in the foreign ministry uh, on both sides. Uh, then we graduated to a joint working group mechanism. 15 talks have been conducted on this issue of territorial dispute resolution. And since 2003 and more concretely from 2005, we have had 22 special representative meetings uh, that were organized. The main purpose was to define the LSE and also the territorial dispute resolution ultimately. Mm. So despite these nearly 40 years of discussion, they were not able to find the LSE as of now, number one point. Number two, for the troops located in the actual Brown, they do know where the line of actual control is. So I agree with Mr. Dr. A that there is a uh, local understanding where their actual line of actual control is located. Right. Because when when the border patrols, border guards, they uh, have the um, they have to operate. They do know where exactly is their map. Uh, and the other side's uh, perception of the LSE. Uh, however, the problem comes when it is weather related. Uh, it's uh, almost 15 degrees, uh, minus 15 degrees Celsius today in the place that they are operating. Uh, sometimes it goes to minus 55 degrees centigrade. Uh, 
uh, and the heights are about 14,000, 15,000 feet. So the problem is of weather. So generally the border patrols keep moving from one place to the other and sometimes they do transgress. I see. So that is where the problem lies. Okay. Let me have also Mr. Hu to explain to us, should the weather be the factor? If it is the factor, should the two sides also be able to work out that factor? And meanwhile, should you know, some of the border patrol officers and soldiers of such a low level at any time hijack, if I could use that extreme word, the extremely important bilateral relations between China and India? Uh, I don't think that the local officials purposely to hijack the bilateral relations. But anyway, because the local officials understand the local conditions, local timing, so sometimes a little more assertive, aggressive, sometimes <clears throat> because of their own uh, duties, they have to carry forward their uh, the daily uh, activities. They have their respective understandings about uh, the local LLC. So, Although just now Professor Sri Hansa has listed all the mechanisms we have in the past, but uh, the progress is, is still not that impressive. So it depends on both ends to work you know, to the same direction. One is that uh, the mechanisms still should be carried forward to maintain a general peace, to prevent the border issue to, to become, uh, uh, to, to kidnap the bilateral relations. On the other side, I think we can take a positive view about the face-off and standoffs uh, from the ground, because I personally tend to believe such kind of face-offs will finally uh, help both sides to find where the exact locations or positions mm -hmm. should be of the LLC gradually. Through this kind of face-offs, sometimes very uh, fierce physical uh, conflict, then will help both sides to realize that that is the bottom line, that is the mm. red line, or even the high voltage wire should not be touched upon. So gradually, after many rounds of face-offs, standoffs, even clashes, both sides gradually to realize where the locate, exact locate of LSC should be. Then finally, the face-offs, standoffs, clash will be reduced to less and less. Let's look at the each year's trend transpasses we now see that 94% of the transpasses occurred in the western section. Mm. Why not in the eastern section and middle section? Because they already has demarcated by feet, by patrolling on the mm -hmm. ground, where the, uh, the area is exactly located. So in the western se section, because of the wire, the terrain, uh, even uh, barren land, the no grades of grass grows there. So it will need some patience. Let's see the clash after clash of finally, finally lead to some more or less or some certain kind of LAC on mm -hmm. the ground. Interesting opinion. You are suggesting political will will becoming even stronger after some kinds of skirmishes as we have witnessed earlier because both sides. My point do. is that uh, uh, my, my basic point is that let's leave with this kind of clash. If the the colonel are not not uh, launch the night strike, night mm. raid, if not because of some sl uh, landslides in the evening. I think such kind of uh, scare of clash happened uh, in, uh, more regularly, but haven't lead to such a kind of uh, casualties. But because of the terrain, because of the night raid, because of the landslide, uh, so everything come together to make it a big news, a okay. big tra 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 tragedy. But isn't there danger, Mr. Hu, if I could just follow up a little bit about your thoughts, uh, these kinds of skirmishes might, need, might lead to harsh feelings from both sides toward one another, uh, basically, yeah, of course, so among the public, class, right? And, the, then, and, then, yeah, and then there could be uh, more than fertile ground, or rather more active support for conflict in both countries toward the other side. So Mr. Hu, uh, when you argue that we probably have to live with these kind of skirmishes, are you suggesting about the reality or are you suggesting about solution? 
I think it is one of what part of the solution in the, in the future. Mm. But uh, this kind of clash with so heavy characters should be avoided. But because I said that some of the uh, factors cannot be controlled, because of, like the evening bed should be avoided. Uh, also, like that, uh, free hand. This kind of policies should be avoided, mm -hmm. and the no first shots should be strictly observed. Then this kind of clash we can live with. Each year there are several uh, this kind of clashes happen, but not like this time uh, have such a heavy impact upon bilateral relations, uh, right. upon the feelings of the two peoples. Professor Kantapali, quickly respond to your Chinese colleague. I think there is a mechanism in place. Uh, in 1993, there is a peace and tranquility agreement. 1996, we signed agreement in the military field. Uh, and in 2005, we have also had an agreement of not taking firearms. Uh, and in 2013, we had a BDCA, Border Defense Cooperation Agreement, of not tailing the border patrols. Uh, the current problem is that the existing CBMs have not been enough. Uh, and at the Xiamen meeting of the BRICS in 2017, in the bylands, they decided to have new set of CBMs, confidence building measures. However, so far we have not been able to evolve nor implement these CBMs. So I think partly because of this reason, we have seen the tension. Mm. If we would have had more concrete CBMs, the problem could have not been arisen. Mm. Mr. Ye, you've been attentively listening to your two other colleagues. Your thoughts, you know, what is the next step? Now yeah. we see both the foreign minister level as well as the defense minister level, they have uh, either bilateral or in a multilateral platform, meeting bilaterally on or off the records over the past few days since the skirmishes happened. So can we expect some concrete result? Uh, meanwhile, in India, if I could ask that, uh, Mr. Ye, uh, there has been, as some kinds of democracy works, uh, a lot of different voices, if not noises, in the media. Uh, talking about these extreme actions. So, uh, Mr. Ye, how both sides should come down and how should those people in the know lead the understanding about the situations in both countries? Firstly, I think to solve the border dispute, the, uh, each side should have the wisdom to resist the temptation of the populism. Mm. Do not try to use the border issue as the mechanism to uh, mobilize their own people. That's the, I think that's the very important part for the uh, final solution. And secondly, I would like to re, uh, re-emphasize the one point that, yes, the minister li uh, level dialogue is quite important. And the uh, local officer, especially the local uh, army com uh, military commander's officer, uh, the, uh, the mechanism is also important. But we need some more pragmatic and uh, policy uh, Level. That means the DG level di uh, dialogue and discussion between the two mini uh, foreign affairs ministers or to the def uh, national defense minister uh, ministries, so they can f try to make the contribution for the for the CBM. But uh, let me uh, emphasize another point that the RAC is a serve the purpose to maintain the situation, not to serve the purpose to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. RAC only recognize the current situation, doesn't reflect the sense and the policy of the, each government on where the border should be. So it takes a long time and required a very strong right. political determination. So that's the reason why we hope the two governments and top leaders, they can take the more uh, wisdom measures or the steps to push this issue I forward. I don't think we can rely on the grassroots local officers for them to solve the problem, okay. far away from that. Got it. And finally, before we go, very quickly from every one of you, how the two countries should resist temptations from other countries who are powers in the world trying to make a big fuss out of this uh, small scale uh, skirmishes between China and India and try to take advantage of it for their own benefits? I think that's a crucial question too. But very quickly from every one of you, Professor uh, Kantapali, please. 
Uh, the U.S. President Trump had tweeted that he would like to mediate, uh, but India and China rejected that offer. Uh, and yesterday, there was the Russian foreign minister who said that India and China have enough maturity to discuss these issues. I think overall, there has been an emphasis that this can be resolved mm -hmm. by China and India uh, at their own bilateral level. All right, Mr. Ye. I totally agree with Professor Kamnabadi. I think that both countries has enough wisdom to solve the problem. And uh, this is for, for the very short comment that I don't think these two countries need a third party engagement to all the interview. I see. Last but not least, uh, Mr. Hu. Anyway, be aware of any third party's involvement because any third parties will have its own interests, own sometimes ulterior motives. Thank you for the three of you cool-minded. Uh, people in the know helping us to understand the latest situation. Really appreciate it. All the best. And may peace be with us. Hu Shisheng, Ye Hailin, Sui Kant, Kantapali. Thank you so much.